Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we're taking a look at the ATN Shot Track video camera, but before that, I'm heading to the farmyard to try to bag a few birds while dodging the rain. Right, we've retreated back to the farmyard again this morning. We've just had a couple of hours of very heavy rain. There's a bit of a window in the weather now, but it's forecast to get bad again later on. So we thought with the shelter of the farm buildings here, at the very least we can prevent Nikki's camera gear from getting wrecked. Now, the downside is that I have shot this farm very heavily through the winter. And to be perfectly honest, I came here one day last week and shot absolutely nothing. Now, that suggests that I'm doing a good job when it comes to the pest control, but it does mean that we could be in for a very difficult session today. Nonetheless, we'll give it a try, but before we get started, there are a couple of things I want to take a look at and have a talk about. Now, the first thing I wanted to cover is acquiring shooting permission. It's one thing we get a lot of comments about and seems to be something that a lot of shooters struggle with. Now, farmyards are a really good place to cut your teeth and get that first permission. The simple fact is, that farmers tend to appreciate help with pest control around their farm buildings, also where they can keep an eye on you, rather than straight away letting you loose in the woods where they may well be keeping pheasants for a pheasant shoot. All being well, you can win their trust around the farm and then eventually get the run of their land and the woodlands too. I tend to always keep my eyes open for farmyards that show signs of having a pest problem whenever I'm driving around the countryside. So I've always got my eyes peeled for things like feral pigeons sitting up on barn roofs, crows, magpies, that kind of thing. And the, the simple fact is, if I think it looks like a promising spot, I'll then plan to find out who owns that farm and drop in and have a chat with them. The important thing that I will remember is not to be wearing camouflage and not to take my gun with me, because you don't want to look too assuming. The purpose of the exercise is to introduce yourself, let them know that you're a responsible shooter and hopefully win their trust. Be prepared for a few knockbacks. It's highly unlikely that every farmer you approach is going to straight away grant you shooting permission. But then again, if you approach 10 farmers and just one says yes, you're in there. Now, one thing that is worth doing is having a card with your contact information that you can leave with them. Because then, if you do get a no, but they change their mind later on, they know how to get hold of you. Another thing that really helps is having shooting insurance, because it just shows that you take your sport seriously. Go for a recognised brand like BASC. If you join Basque, you get free shooting insurance included because it's something that most farmers will be familiar with and are likely to trust. Something that can really put you on the fast track to getting shooting permission is an introduction from somebody who knows the farmer or landowner. It almost counts as a recommendation. So, rack your brains for anybody that you might know from work, the school run, the pub, or wherever that may just be able to give you that introduction to somebody that's got a problem with pests on their holding and may well appreciate some help from a responsible air gun shooter. And don't underestimate a farmyard shooting permission. Some people can be a bit snobby about them as if they're second rate to a woodland permission. However, they can offer you some really varied shooting. On this farm alone, we've shot feral pigeons from the rafters in the cattle pens, collared doves out round the open farmyard, crows off the rooftops and even rats by lamping and using night vision after dark. Another really good thing about shooting on farmyards is that you don't need to splash out on fancy camo gear to get close to your quarry. Now obviously I've got on my camo jacket today but that's just because I know what's in the pockets and I know I'm ready to go as soon as I slip it on. But to be honest with you the quarry here is accustomed to a fair amount of disturbance from farm workers and machinery. So in all honesty you only need to look like a farm worker for them to take you for granted. So a pair of jeans and a jumper or a plain jacket should be perfectly sufficient for farmyard pest control. Now, it's also the perfect place for a legal limit air rifle. Obviously, that relatively low power makes it quite a safe gun to use as long as you're sensible about fallout zones 
and backstops, but also because it's quiet. Now I'm using the Air Arms S510 Ultimate Sporter today, and with that QTEC silencer on there, it barely makes a sound, which means we're not going to startle livestock. Now the other thing I wanted to talk about was the attachment that I use to attach a video camera to the back of the scope for our scope cam footage. Now I probably won't be using it today, but it's another thing that we get asked a lot of questions about, presumably by those of you that like to film your own shooting trips. So I'll run through it again now, so you can have a proper look at the attachment that I use. Right, so what I've got here is a very basic Sony Handycam. And what I've done is I've glued a step-up ring for a camera lens around the lens of the Handycam. Now, I've then taken the rubber sleeve that you would normally use to attach flip-up scope covers. I've taken the scope cover off of that and I have glued the corresponding ring to fit that step-up ring. So effectively what I can do is screw that rubber sleeve onto the handy cam. Now the great thing is that you can get other rings and glue different sized rubber collars to it and fit the same camera to different scopes. So effectively once they're joined up together all you need to do is fit that rubber sleeve onto the rear of the scope. The great thing is that the rubber gives you a bit of play as well so you can sort out the alignment and it's on there ready to fire up the camera and film your kill shots as and when you take them. Right, so that's a little bit about farmyard shooting permissions, the kit you need to make the most of them and how I attach my scope cam. Now as I mentioned earlier I'm expecting it to be tricky today but we've actually noticed a few collared doves and feral pigeons moving around while I've been yapping so we'll go and give it a go now and see if we can't bag one or two. Right, this looks a little bit more promising. We've got a collared dove just on the edge of the silage clamp. It looks quite settled there. The trouble is, it's not a safe shot. I'm not happy with the fallout zone behind it. So what I'm going to do is leave Nikki here, stalking along the building, or I can then get a safe shot, hopefully get the first bird of the session. Right, that's a nice clean kill to kick off with. Let's move on. Right, I don't want to be walking around with my hands full of birds, so I'm just going to leave that one there. However, collared doves are fantastic to eat, so I will be coming back for that one. spooked a few birds from the trees at the end of this pen as I came around the corner then. Now those trees seem to be quite a popular stopping off point for birds. They tend to have, stop and have a bit of a scan before they drop into the pens to feed. So what I'm going to do, settle in here for a while. I've got cover from a couple of old muck spudders and some other machinery here. So I'm quite well concealed. I'm going to sit it out for a while and see if something else doesn't drop in. Well, I managed to completely fluff that chance. A rook came in, landed where I hoped it would land, 
relatively long shot, gave it a bit of hold over. It was bobbing about a little bit in the wind, but I still went for the headshot. Now, I'm not sure whether the pellet clipped a twig or clean mist over the top because I'd given it too much hold over, but I missed it all the same. And that's a really frustrating missed opportunity. That's a lot more like it. Collared dove there came into the same group of trees. I actually went for higher turn lung shot that time, but it's dropped like a sack of spuds. Much better than that missed rook. Right, and that was another one of those elusive feral pigeons. Now, it goes to show there are a few still about here. I took that one with a heart and lung shot. It's dropped down the other side of the barn. I can't see it, so what I'm gonna do now is break cover and make sure that it was a clean kill. While I was picking these two, a few collared doves have just circled over the other side of the farm and dropped back in. So what I'm gonna do is chuck these down by the car and then go around the back and hopefully ambush these doves that have just this moment landed. Well, how about that? That was from almost exactly the same spot as the first one we had at the very start of the session. Let's go and get it. That's actually gone a lot better than I'd expected. Now we've had a few collared doves. We've had that feral pigeon. I was expecting it to be a real struggle today, so I'm more than happy with that. Now, we've been here a heck of a lot longer than it's gonna look in the final edit. It has actually been pretty quiet, so I'm gonna make that do now and head for home. And it's a good job we wrapped up that farmyard foray when we did. It was absolutely pouring down about 10 minutes after we made it back to the car. And now, it's the Airgun Show News. This is the Airgun Show News. Target Sprint is coming to the UK in a big way. This fast-paced new discipline, open to all ages, combines three 400-meter runs with two standing air rifle shoots at knockdown targets. The Northern Shooting Show has announced that it'll host the northern leg of this year's Target Sprint National Series on the 6th and the 7th of May. Entrants will pay just £5 for a training session, competition entry and free access to the show. Find out more on the Northern Shooting Show website. Staying with shows, the British Shooting Show will take place at the NEC next year. Show organisers announced the move last week, having finally agreed to terms with the UK's biggest exhibition venue. 
They promised a bigger, more impressive show on all fronts and they said they would not be looking to raise ticket prices in 2018. Furthermore, they said they had reached a deal with the NEC to prepay parking for the event. The show returns for its 10th year on the 16th to the 18th of February. Basque is on the hunt for a new chief executive after dismissing former boss Richard Ali for gross misconduct. Ali was suspended last May and dismissed in December. He appealed, but the ruling was upheld at the end of last month. This came after he was accused of misusing association funds to support an unauthorized internal investigation and displaying culpable negligence which placed the association at risk. Peter Glenzer, chairman of Basque, said it has been a difficult time, but the association is now satisfied that it has taken proportionate legal action to put matters right. And finally, shooting representatives are locked in a fight with the Home Office on massive new fees for shooting clubs. Currently it costs £84 for a club to get approved status. The Home Office wants to increase this to over a thousand. This could spell the end for smaller clubs such as those at universities, which help get lots of new air gunners into the sport. A consultation on the plans closed this month and the Home Office is now considering responses. That was the Air Gun Show News. This week's kit item is the ATN ShotTrack X HD, which costs £159. It's a fantastic gadget that mounts to your gun to record the action as it unfolds downrange. With more and more shooters wanting to film and post the action from their shoots, I can see this being a really popular piece of kit. One of my favourite things about this video camera is that it's very small and light. It's only about 70 millimetres long and it weighs a mere 100 grams and that's with the battery fitted. Mount it to your scope and it's actually less obtrusive than shooting with a lamp attached. The attachment clamp has a weaver fitting. I've attached this one via a very clever sports match mount that features a weaver attachment in the top half of the clamp. Now, the only problem that I've had is that the orientation of the camera assumes that it'll be mounted underneath the gun, and the result is that my footage has been filmed upside down. However, anybody with a basic understanding of video editing should be able to flip the image easily enough. If you want to side mount the camera, there are attachments so you can shift the clamp to the side and keep it upright. It's only top mounting that isn't catered for. Whichever way you decide to mount it, it won't take you long to spot the big advantage that this camera offers over a conventional scope cam. The fact that you can shoulder the gun in the normal way and look through your scope properly rather than having to look at the crosshairs on a screen. It's very easy to use by toggling through the various positions of the rear dial switch. The options are laser on, power off, record and record with laser. Now, I don't regard that laser as an essential feature, but some shooters may find it very handy as an additional sighting system. The shot track shoots full HD colour footage, and ATN states it as having five times the magnification of a conventional action camera. Now, it's unfair to expect a device as compact as this to compete with a normal video camera. However, I'm very impressed with the quality of the footage that I've managed to shoot with it, especially considering just how small that lens is. To give you an idea of how it looks, this is a two-thirds grown rabbit at about 30 meters, and the gun's mounted on a trigger stick tripod. There is a bit of a jolt when the shot goes off, but that's because I'm using an FAC rated air gun. The unit is recoil resistant, so you should also be able to use it on a spring powered air gun. The camera comes supplied with a CR123A battery and manual, though you'll need to buy the micro SD card that it records to. That battery should give a continuous runtime of about two hours, which should actually amount to quite a lot of filming as you only really use it in short bursts. So that's the ATN ShotTrack XHD. This compact gadget offers an effective and unobtrusive means of capturing the action as it unfolds downrange. If you're a shooter who likes to film 
and post video of your shooting trips, this neat little camera is well worth a look. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, it's time you joined the organisation that works to promote and protect your sport.